As you know, I've been speaking to you this week on the importance of choice and how the individual choices we make add up to determining the outcome of our lives. And I've been using the letters of the word choice to describe the things that we should always choose. I first talked about Christ, the most important choice that we can make. And then yesterday we talked about humility, always choosing the way of humility. Today, I'd like to talk about the next letter in the word choice, and that's O for obedience. Why is obedience so important? Well, to know that, we must first understand something about how we human beings are different from the rest of God's creation. See, when God made us, he gave us something called free will. Now, you may have heard that term before, but even if you haven't, don't worry about it. I'll try to describe it very quickly for you. This simply means that you can choose, and we're talking about choice. See, for example, God also created the earth, but the earth can never choose. The earth can never disobey him. In fact, since the time that God created it, the earth has faithfully obeyed God going around the sun in 365 and a quarter days. And then it starts over. Never once has the earth disobeyed. And God could have easily made us human beings also like that, programmed to always obey him. Nothing would have ever gone wrong on the earth. But you know what? We wouldn't have been able to love him. The earth can never love God. We can. The earth can never choose to love God. We can. And God would rather have disobedient children like you and I than obedient robots like the earth and the mountains and all the other inanimate objects we see in, the, in creation. I'm a father. I have children at home. And I also have computers at home. My computers, they never disobey me. Sometimes things go wrong, but they never disobey me if I program them correctly. My children, on the other hand, they do disobey me sometimes. But you know who's more precious to me in my house? Of course, my children. And I would much rather have children, even though they sometimes might disobey me, as all children do, because they have the ability to love me. My computers will never love me, no matter how nicely I speak to them. My children may disobey me, but they will love me back. And that's how God is. And one of the greatest acts of love for God is this, that we obey him. Jesus told his disciples in John chapter 14, verse 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you love me, you will obey me is what he was saying. Let me give you a little picture. Would you say that it is possible for a little boy or a girl about your age, let's say, to fly an airplane? Maybe, if they're really smart. What about if that little boy or girl is blind, completely blind? I think we'd all say that's impossible. But what if sitting next to that little blind boy or girl in the cockpit is the child's father, who is an expert pilot and has landed that same airplane in that same airport plenty of times. And he's giving detailed instructions to the little boy or girl sitting next to him, even guiding the child's hands across the instrument panels in the cockpit. That blind boy or girl, miraculous as it might seem, can land that plane smoothly as long as he or she follows daddy's instructions carefully. And you see, dear friends, our lives are just like that. Even though most of us can see with our physical eyes, when it comes to the future, even what the rest of today is going to look like, let alone next month or next year or 10 years from now, we are all equally blind. And often navigating our way through life can feel like you're flying an airplane 
blind in a storm. And that's why God says, I want to sit next to you. Just follow my instructions. And if you disobey me and make a mess of your life, come back to me. Start listening to me again before it's too late. I'll set the airplane back on its course and we'll still land this plane together safely together. See, even in this, Jesus didn't just tell us to obey. He showed us. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8, that even though he was a son, the son of God, he too learned obedience in the things that he suffered. See, when Jesus was in heaven, before he came down to this earth, he never had to obey anybody. He was God. He is God. But he had to show us how to obey. And so he came down to this earth and, as it were, put a blindfold over his eyes. Even though he could see, he put a blindfold over his eyes and sat in that plane and said, child, I'll show you how to fly this plane blind by listening to my father. And every day that he was here on this earth, he listened to the father's voice and obeyed the father and he landed his plane safely. When he died on the cross, he said, it is finished. That's like saying, I have landed. And today he's seated in the heavenlies. And now he wants to sit next to you through the Holy Spirit and say, come child, I've done this before. I lead you home too. Just obey me. Obedience begins when you're a child. The Bible also says in Ephesians 6, verses 1, 2, and 3, verses that I memorized sitting in your seats in school when I was a little boy. It says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. That's why Jesus came as a child. He didn't come as a 30-year-old when he came to this earth. He came as a little baby and grew up. And he was five years old and eight years old and 12 years old and 16 years old and 18 years old, facing all the situations that you face at your age. He had to obey his parents at home and his school teachers in Nazareth, even when he didn't feel like it. So you two children, obey your parents and your teachers. And that verse, verse three in Ephesians six says, it will go well with you on this earth. It will go well with you if you obey. You see something else that God has given us, which the rest of creation actually does not have at all, is a conscience. It's another big word, which maybe you've heard before, but it's essentially the way by which God can speak to us. It's like having a little radio inside your heart that is connected to God, and God can speak to you through that radio or a little telephone. These days, it's hard to find a radio. And God can speak to us through that. When you disobey, you will feel a little prick in your conscience saying, you shouldn't have disobeyed. Don't ignore that prick, because if you do, as you get older, it will, that voice in your conscience will get softer and softer and softer and could completely die out and you'll destroy your life. So pay attention to your conscience, that little voice in your heart. Every human being has it. God has also given us his word, the Bible, through which he speaks to us. And when you receive Christ, as I talked about on the first day, this book comes alive. You know, dear students, this is the only book that actually can come alive. The Bible itself says so. And I've proved it in my life. Jesus proved it in his life. Many other godly men have proved it in their lives. And you can too. So read this every day. Even if it's a little bit, God will speak to you through it if you believe him. And finally, I want to give you something from my own testimony. Ask God every day to speak to you, really. See, not a day goes by nowadays when, when I'm laying in my bed, as soon as I wake up, even before my eyes are completely opened, I pray, Lord Jesus, help me through today. I'm flying this airplane of my life blind, but I'm reaching out for your hand. Please sit next to me and guide me. And you know what? I can tell you the honest truth. He has been guiding me. He does so faithfully. 
Sometimes I might lose my way. Sometimes I may not be able to hear his voice clearly, but he's been guiding me, I can tell you. I hope you too will develop the habit of doing that, dear friends. Choose today to obey every situation. Jesus will help you land your airplane too safely. God bless you. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you again for these students. Oh, I think about the potential that they represent, the mighty things that they can do for your kingdom. I pray, Lord, that they will learn the way of obedience at a young age and will honor you and prove their love for you. And I praise you that you will do wonderful things through them as they obey you. Help them, Lord, in whatever they're going through. Encourage them in Jesus' name. Amen.